Hello. What we'd like to do with this short session is just to go over the idea of using farm structure and how to start your farm structure. There was some discussion in a seminar that not many people were using the farm structure settings. And within farm structure, you can keep track of farm prices and there'll be some additional features that you can use like the economic then total farm economics and also inventory items and and future things so what i'd like to do is just go over the idea that right now we have a consulting group shown up here and um, what we'd like to do is go down to farm structure here and just click on farm structure and from there you will get um, a list or the ability to make a list of the items that or the farms or the the um, clientele that you'd be using it's called farm structure because it listed in farms and we'll go over that I guess the first thing we should do is look up at your working group and within your working group there's a small icon over here and you would probably need to make sure that within this setting here in this field here you will see the working group described and there's a button here that calls the uh, will enable you to use the farm structure setting so you may want to make sure that's clicked if you hover over the eye it allows you to build some pins and some farms within farm structure so once that is clicked and used then you can go into farm structure and again, yours may not have any farms within there. So what we may have to do is just to look at um, creating a farm first off. And so what we're gonna do is you would have no farms in here. You can click on the green mouse or the green plus box here with your right mouse sorry left mouse and you will see that you have automatically created a new farm over here so once you've created a new farm you can highlight that farm and from here you can name that farm and probably what i would do right now is to name this farm um let's just call it demo and then template and so now i've got a demo template farm here and i'm not going to put everything else in there and i'll show you why in a minute um, and again inside of here you can fill all that out but we're not going to do it right now because i want to show you that you can create um, this is a template for your other farms to be built on. If in the case of the United States, you are using multi-component milk pricing, you could click here and then go in here and fill in your data for this farm. So you could use multi-component milk pricing. But what we're going to do is just stay with conventional system for right now. Now, once I'm in that demo template and I confirm this, then my new farm will become the demo template farm and so what we do within farms is we like to arrange things in barns or groups they've used barns in the in the cncps so they've kept that connotation there so new farm one if you or new barn one if you click on that you can call that your lactation uh, group or barn if you would care to use that now once within that lactation barn or group you have a pin of animals and so depending on how many lactation groups you have here like right now I might just put TMR group so that may be the main set of cows that are getting the TMR in the lactation barn lactation cows it does give you this little um, warning button here and you must assign a 
set of specifics or requirements for that animal. So here I'm going to do a lactating cow. And that has become my lactating group. Now, if I have a fresh group inside of this demo template farm, in the lactation group, I have another group of animals in there. I can right mouse click on the group and I can add a pin of animals. And let's say for that pin of animals, I will call those my fresh pin. And then here again, I have the warning sign and I must go ahead and assign that to lactating pin, lactating dairy cow. Now, what I may want to do then is to assign a, another group or a lactation group or non-lactation. So I would right mouse click on my farm and I would add a new barn and then I get new barn one. So this may be my dry cows and close up cows. So I may call them non-lactation groups or barns if you would like to. Inside of there, my first pin, if I just click on that first pin, might be my dry cows. And then from here, I would go ahead and assign that set of requirements to the dry cows. If I go up to the non-lactation group, right mouse click on it again, add another pin of cows, that could be my close-up cows. And I will go over here. And now my close-up cows jumped over here alphabetically. Now I'm going to assign those. You have lactation cow, dry cow, replacement heifer, beef cow, young calf, and lactating beef cow. This also will be a dry cow. And so remember, when I'm defining the dry cows or the close-up cows, it's the same set of requirements except my close-up cows would be 260 days carried calf and that will give me the requirements that increase due to mammogenesis for protein and energy and start dropping some intake. This also would give me the close-up uh, cow uh, calculations and figures on the DCAD and the associated um, ideas around that. Now I can go one more right mouse click to here add another group and what I may do is put uh, call this pin uh, 300 pound heifers and so my 300 pound heifer diets would be in there Again, it jumped up here to, for alphabetical, and that would be a replacement heifer. One more time, right mouse click, add the pin of animals, and this might be my 500 pound heifer group. Right mouse, wait for that to come over here replacement heifer one more group of heifers right mouse click on there add a new pin and this will be my my 800 pound heifers or pregnant heifers and move it up here and i will put those in replacement now i can actually add another pin of animals and let's just look at that pin let's look at the definition for that pin here is where I can use the beef cow module which is basically feedlot requirements and and feeding of beef cattle in in yards or um, you know looking at um, the 
average daily gain using a different, not using the CNCPS model, but a uh, adaptation from ME to give you average daily gain on beef animals grown uh, for meat. Young calf would basically be a small calf with pre-ruminant, so on milk feeding. Lactating beef cow would be Angus, uh, um, any beef breed, um, very low milk production and, and different feed. So you can decide that. Now, I'm not going to fill that. I may just go ahead and say it was beef animals. But I may go in here and right mouse click on that group and remove that pin of animals from that group. So I'm going to remove that pin right there. So now I have my demo template. Now one thing after I do that, so once you build a representative of the farm that you're working with, you can right mouse click on this template and you can go through, you can add another barn, you could remove this farm, you could transfer it to a different working group, you could reorder the barns, or you could do what we call a farm duplication. So what I might do in this case is, is uh, go ahead and um, duplicate that template farm, and I might call it um, Weber Dairy. And then I can give it an ID code, which may be important if I ever would email this or anything. I'm just going to call it Weber 1 or Weber Dairy 1. If I had recipes in there, I could also duplicate the recipes, but I don't show any recipes in there. So let me proceed with that. And it's going to ask me if I want to farm duplicate, and I do. Successful duplication, and here is my Weber Dairy which is a clone of the, the demo template. And then I can, if I didn't have any fresh animals in here, I can remove that pin of animals. And um, let's say, you know, I don't have heifers here. I could remove that. Somebody else raises those animals for me. Or I have just two diets, then I can show this as two diets. So that way you can build the farm once as the template. You always have this demo template here and then I can clone that and I can easily delete those. I don't have to rebuild those those um, farms and, and structures again. Now let's say that I already have recipes that I've saved within the program that I have used in the big in the uh, full list system without associating to a dairy. So now I can go search for this Weber Dairy TMR high group just by right mouse clicking on the group and looking at something called the recipe list. And so when I look in the recipe list, what happens? The recipe list appears over here to the right and then I can scroll down everything that's hazed out is already associated with a different pin but in some cases you may have all your diets so here in the black is a fresh heifer rat recipe and when it was done that is not associated with a farm and so what I can do is scroll down, keep scrolling down and finding, aha, here is my demo high cow. And what I can do is click on it. And when I click on that, I now have one recipe associated with that lactation group. I could do the same thing with the close-up cows. And when I go to the close-up pin here, I can look at the recipe list for those animals. Now, it's looking for the dry cow because that's what we've clicked on right here. So as I scroll down, I could find in my list somewhere, aha, here's a file that maybe is associated with that. And if I click on that, then this file will now become associated with this.
So now I can, I, this system actually allows you to find that missing file and it's an easy way to move files that were not associated with a farm into a farm. Now, if you had one that was misassociated, maybe I would go to this Mayweather dairy and look at the close up diet here and right mouse click and look at the recipe list. And I can see that there might have been a misassociated one. And then I can unassociate it with it and then reassociate it with another pin. So here is the one group dry that's listed in that Mayweather dairy, which was just another demo. So when I click it, now it's not associated. I could go back to my file here, click on here, go to close ups, and go to its recipe list and then find that one and there's that file there and I can now associate it back over with that with that close up here okay so doing that just shows you how you can move around and um change back and forth. Oh, I think I was going to put that in, not that one, but the Weber. So let me just go ahead and move that and go back to the Weber farm and put it over here by the recipe list. And then I can search by one because that was a name in there that it had. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Click on that instead of one. Now we have two, I hope, two, there we go. So now we've had that. So now the idea is associating all those rations with farms and with pins now. When I go into recipes, then I can use by farm instead of the full list method. So now instead of using the full list, I can go to the Weber Dairy, click here, and then I can see from there the recipes in there by the time they were moved in there or made in there. So I'm choosing to show the last nine within the groups. And this has real advantages in the fact that you can now <clears throat> keep your feed cost associated by farm, which the computer will automatically do. And then as we go through and show you the economic sheet, it will be a benefit to have this into farm structure under the farm. Also, there are some features that we're developing as far as like inventory and um further development will help if you have those recipes associated by farms. So you could see different farms. Here is a farm. Uh, if you hit the blue globe, it blows up everything that you have. And you can see it has this Lynn Willow Creek has a non-lactating with close up far off dries, the lactation cows, we have our fresh cows. We've never really done late diet, so there's only two, two recipes in there. And the last one being uh, quite a while ago, we've never put those, we talked about doing those diets, but that's why there's only two in there. We're showing nine of the last rations. And so there's milk cow, so that just blows everything up. So that's the idea of using farm structure to help organize your work, keep your rations straight. And uh, thanks for your time. And I hope that answers some of the questions and you can see some of the benefits for doing that. Thank you.